What role can the writings of the Muslim mystic theologians like Ibn al-Arabi and the Mutakallimeen play in developing responses to these type of issues that people are facing, not just theologically, intellectually, also in their day-to-day lives, i.e. experientially, adawq. Adawq is not day-to-day life, but it's something in the, uh, uh, in the parlance of Ibn al-Arabi and those uh, like him that is at the perimeter of human experience. It's the Ridwan, it's the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested in the heart of the servant. This is what Dalq is, means personal spiritual experience of the divine. Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashuruna ilaha illallah, Ashuruna ilaha illallah. Ashuruna Muhammadun Rasulullah, Ashuruna Muhammadun Rasulullah, Hayya ala salati, Hayya ala salati. Allah <laughs> Allah. Ibn al-Arabi is not a prophet for us. However, he is someone who cared a great deal about everything that the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He cared enough to study the books of Hadith, such as Bukhari and Muslim and Abu Dawud, the Sunan of Abi Dawud and Tirmidhi for years, long enough to get ijazas from the shaykhs who taught these hadith works. His knowledge of the Qur'an, I haven't heard whether he memorized the entire Qur'an, but I would be surprised if he did not. So he spent himself in trying to understand. We can't say, did he succeed or not? We certainly believe that he succeeded, but we can't say for certain. If one spends himself if one, and to spend the night in prayer and the day in dhikr and spend one's tongue in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and focus one's whole concern on Allah as those like him did. This is the dhawq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, manifest something of his good pleasure in one's life, one will find tawfiq. Jalla Rabbana an ya'amalahu al-abdu naqtan for yujaziyahu nasi'atan. Our Lord is far, far too exalted for the servant to deal with him in cash and Allah to deal with him in credit, merely in credit. Rather, we see tawfiq. And the exception is, as the Prophet said, when a good person is among a lot of bad people whom Allah feels the society has become too bad and wants to send them a reminder. These are. As for the mutakallimeen, for ordinary people, for people that are true believers, mu'mineen people, and who is breathed of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the solution of the mutakallimeen, I'm talking about the orthodox scholastic theologians is fine and it's, it corresponds to reality. Uh, Imam al-Juwaini who is a mutakallam, he is the shaykh of Imam al-Ghazali in Kalam. He said, لَيْسَ wa ta'ala اللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَىٰ خَيْرٌ وَلَا شَرٌ بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِلَى الْحُكْمَ الْإِلَهِيَةِ إِلَى الْحُكْمَ الْإِلَهِيَةِ إِلَى الْحُكْمَ He said, there is not in the actions of Allah either good or evil in re- respecting what he is respecting his own divinity. Because all actions are one and the same to him. Because he's the judge. And he does whatever he wills. He is the criterion himself. He is haq. Allah is the haq. It's the right, the truth. That that which is due and that which should be and is. Allah. 
but rather actions, things that happen, events, only differ in their levels, whether they are good or whether they are bad, whether they are prosperity, whether they are failure, whether they are perdition and damnation, or whether they are felicity and eternal salvation and bliss in relation to people, to the servants. This is the solution of the Mutakallimeen. Others, Abu Qahir al-Baghdadi, when he talked about it, he said, the solution is that Allahu fa'alun lima yurid. He said, the solution is that Allah does whatever He does, he, whatever He wants. And He's not, He doesn't, He's not, does not answerable to anyone for anything whatsoever. And that is an answer that will only be satisfying to those of great iman. And so perhaps the mutakallimeen are not the ones to ask, but rather those who think. Well, the people to ask about this are the people that recite the Qur'an with understanding. The people who, when they hear the call to prayer, they pull on their clothes and go out of the house and they go to the masjid and pray. The people who, when they are tempted to say something that will damage the life and career and name of someone else, instead zip their lip because they're afraid of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do to them if they rend the honor of a fellow human being. These are the people who can tell you about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these are the ones who experience in their day-to-day -day life. لا يرحم الله من لا يرحم الناس The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah does not have mercy on someone who does not have mercy on other people. So if you hear about the plight of someone who is unfortunate, someone who has undergone a difficulty, a calamity, a punishment, a disaster, and you don't feel any compassion within your heart, you've got a problem. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. The blighted corruption has appeared by land and by sea for that which human hands, people's hands have earned. Earned, it's a metaphor. It means they thought they were going to earn something big and all they earned was disaster. Day late and a dollar short. The Adikahum Badala the Aminu that he might give them to taste something of that which they worked. La Allahum why? Why? La Allahum Yarjiaun that haply they would return to what? To him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Allah with repentance, with sincerity with love, with obedience, with felicity, to endless bliss. And so, the choice is yours. Everyone who dies only finds their choices. And nobody is a victim of anything except their own dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the significance of any particular person's death I am ignorant of, and you are ignorant of. And nobody knows it except that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be not hasty to judge. And give Allah the benefit of the doubt. As Abu Sulaiman al-Darani said, radiallahu anhu, he said, Man hasana dhanhu bila faqad fatah alayhi bahab al-Rahmah. Whoever gives Allah the benefit of the doubt, Allah has opened up the door to his mercy unto and that's a lot of people with us here. Uh, it's time to pray. So, with the permission of everyone listening, we will take our leave. Sifr al-Fatiha.